Yeah, this is the next day's video. It's kind of weird seeing the arms and legs just separate. We have a whole lab full of arms and legs. <clears throat> Worth bearing in mind that uh, when we did AI Day, uh, this version of Optimus didn't work, work at all. So the rate of improvement here, I think, is, is quite uh, significant. Um, it's obviously not doing parkour. Uh, but uh, it is walking around, and we have multiple, multiple uh, copies, I suppose, of Optimus. Um, the thing that I think Tesla brings to the table that others don't have is that we have um, we have the. Uh, real-world AI, we're, we're the most advanced in real-world AI, so the same AI that drives the car, uh, it, which you can think of the car really as a robot on wheels, and this is a robot on legs. Um, so as we solve real-world AI, and I don't, think there's any, I don't think there's anyone even close to Tesla on solving real-world AI, um, that same computer and software uh, goes into Optimus. Um, so it's, it's not that helpful to have a humanoid robot if you have to program every individual action. Um, it needs to be able to walk around autonomously and solve tasks. Um, you should be able to instruct it in simple things by sh showing visually what, you're, what, what the robot needs to do or just telling it what to do. So, um, so I think that's a key advantage that we have. And then we also uh, are good at designing things for manufacturing and then manufacturing itself. So the, the actuators in Optimus are all custom designed Tesla actuators. So we designed the, the, the electric motor, the gearbox, the power electronics, obviously the battery pack and everything else that goes into Optimus. Um, we're actually quite, we were quite surprised to find how little was available off the shelf. Uh, because there's a lot of a vast number of electric motors, um, gearboxes and whatnot, that are available in the world, and we found none of them were useful in a, in a humanoid robot. Literally none. So you have to custom design the actuators um, for a humanoid robot, um, and so the same team that designed the groundbreaking. Uh, electric motors that are in the, say, the Model S Plaid designed the actuators in the robot. Um, so, I mean, for, for practical purposes, what this means is that we should be able to bring an actual product to market at scale that is useful um, far faster than any, anyone else. Um, and, you know, assuming that the things I'm saying are true, uh, or at least you can put it, I think they are true, you can just, it's just a question of the timing. Um, you start getting into interesting questions of like, what's the ratio of humans to humanoid robots? I think it might be greater than one to one. You know, because you could, you could sort of see a use, a home use for robots, certainly industrial uses for robots, uh, humanoid robots. Um, I think, I think we might exceed a one-to-one -one ratio of humanoid robots to humans. Um, it's not even clear what an economy means at that point. You know, if, since an economy is output per person times persons, but if output is much higher and there's no limit on persons, then what's the actual limit on the economy? You know, we're, we're still pretty far from Kardashev scales here, but uh, we're getting there. So anyway, uh, it's a, probably the least understood or appreciated part of what we're doing at Tesla, but will probably be worth significantly more than the, uh, the car side of things long term. <laughs>